Being a wood turner is not always just fun and games. Sometimes you gotta do some maintenance on your lathe. I find it time to do it on mine. Actually, probably two months or three months ago would have been a really good time. But today's the day. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, as we like to say here at Shady Acres Wood Shop. Howdy, let's get to it. Over my 50 plus years of being a woodworker, wood turner, I've used various products for various different machines. I've always used Johnson Paste Wax on all my cast iron tables surfaces like table saw, band saw, drill press, stuff like that. Excellent product. It's great. I think I've tried it on my lathe and didn't find it to be that good. So I moved to this product and I've been using this for many years. And to be honest, it's not all that great. <laughs> it doesn't last. I don't know how often you're supposed to do this, but once a week is a little too often for me. So I'm going to try something different today. First, we're going to clean all the cast iron on the lathe with uh, four aught steel wool. Buff it up, clean it off. And then I'm going to try this product that I haven't used for many years. I don't remember if it's any good or not. It's a greaseless lubricant, so it won't draw dust. And that sounds like a good idea to me around the wood lathe, so I'm going to try that. This is a product that many people are familiar with. This is to clean out the Morse taper. In my case, number two Morse taper on the headstock and tailstock. So we'll be using that. And we'll be using a rag. Other than that, I hope we don't have to use anything else. Well, right off, we will be using something else. We'll be using compressed air. One thing you need to do with at least modern lathes, probably all lathes, I suppose, of course, yeah, all, all lathes, is you need to blow the dust out of them. Whatever kind of lathe you have, you got pulleys, you got speed controls, whatever you have, it gets dusty in there. So I like to just turn it on and blow it out. You hear that clicking? That's because my chuck is loose and it's it's not loose as it's uh, as it's attached to the lathe it's loose inside of it and that's a good thing that means it's easy to easy to turn the uh, chuck jaws if I speed it up that goes away now they can't make that noise they were making but you want easy to turn chuck jaws and I, I did some maintenance on that a while ago, so it's it's good to go. And now this is good to go. You only I only do this maybe, I don't know, every four or five turning, something like that. Let's move on to the tool rest and tailstock. As a wood turner, and more specifically as a YouTube creator, there's nothing more irritating than this. It just it just hangs up it won't slide and then it'll squeak and I have to edit that out of my video when that happens because I'm so embarrassed that I haven't done any maintenance another thing is you, you might see me when I say I need to adjust my tool rest you might see me going like this that's because once it's tight on this particular lathe my friend Gary has a Laguna and I don't see him having this issue on his. Maybe he has done something, I don't know. But once I loosen this up, this, this won't come out of there. I, gotta, I have to turn it. Pull it. As I'm pulling it up, I have to wiggle it around to get it to go where I want it to go. It's, it's, it's irritating. I need to clean inside here. This is called the banjo. This is the tool rest. Tool rest fits inside the banjo. and it doesn't slide very nicely. So I'm gonna clean that up, do a little lubrication inside there, see if that helps. I'm gonna take the banjo off. In order to do that, I'm gonna take the tailstock off as well. And that's not a fun task. It's heavy and it's awkward. And I, I barely left enough room. I, I did this on purpose, but I barely left enough room to get it off of there. Like I said, it's heavy. So you can see some wear on the bottom there. I'm just going to take this 4-aught steel wool 
and kind of buff this up a little bit. Never use sandpaper. Don't use sandpaper on this or your lathe bed either. Bad idea. Now these are the only two surfaces that touch except for the top side of this big washer looking thing. And when I say top side, I mean under here. And it's difficult to get under there. I, I could take it apart. I'm not going to. I'm just going to stick my steel wool under there and turn it around. And that's what grips the underside of the lathe bed. So it pinches between here and here. When I work my lever, that moves this up and down. Not much, just a little bit, not even, not even a quarter of an inch. So now we've cleaned it off. I'm going to take some air and blow that steel wool out of there. And then we'll lubricate it. Now like I say, it's been years since I used this stuff. As I recall, it didn't spray out of there all that well. So I don't know what kind of mess we're going to make, but I put a rag under here because I don't want lubricant all over my workbench. <laughs> well, it comes out pretty heavy, doesn't it? Now I'm just going to take a paper towel, kind of spread it around. I'm not trying to wipe it all off, I'm just spreading it around. Then I'm going to try and get some under here too. And of course I got some on my bench. And we'll let that dry just a little bit. And then while that's drying, we'll get the tool rest off of here. And the banjo. This is a little more easy to remove. A little more easy, a little easier. And I'm still waiting for that to dry on there, so I'm going to just start on the lathe bed. Steel wool again, 4 out steel wool. I keep my lathe pretty clean, so I, I don't really need any solvents or anything. Mostly I'm just trying to get rid of whatever I had on here before. I'm not trying to make this brand new, I'm just trying to make it more pleasant to use. Now I'm doing the inside of the lathe bed, inside of this rail here. And then one part that a lot of people I think might forget is the underside of this. Under here, under there. That's where when when both of those items are sliding along and that big washer under there it comes up and it grips the underside of the lathe bed that black washer so that needs to be clean and lubricated as well so I've just got my finger on this steel wool under there and I can feel some grit under there so that might be a major part of my problem Although I always do this, when, whenever I do do this, which is not all that often. And then, of course, air. And then just a, a bare hand feel, see if you have any burrs or any, anything sticking up that might cause any of those sliding items to uh, hang up. I see I do have a few scratches in here, but that's that's just normal usage. That's the banjo scratching it, not uh, anything else. I don't I don't set anything on here. I never set coffee cups or anything on my cast iron tools. None of them. I don't drop a file on here, or I don't I don't drop a screwdriver on here. I don't do that. So whatever's on there is just normal wear, and I don't I don't feel anything causing any issues here. So I think instead of spraying it on and getting it all over everything. I'm going to spray it on my paper towel. Oh boy, it just comes pouring out of there. And then get that under that lip as well. I'm going off camera because I have a nice uh, mat that I stand on here and I don't want lubricant all over it. Under the rail. 
inside the rail, under the rail. Now I'll let that dry for a bit. I'll probably point a fan at it, dry a little bit quicker, and I'll be back in a minute. So while that's drying, we can work on the banjo and tool rest. The banjo has a few moving parts. Of course, the locking handle. And then this slides back and forth. And again, underneath here is what clamps the top of the lathe bed, or the bottom of the lathe bed, I'm sorry, the bottom of that lip that I was cleaning and lubricating on the lathe bed. Clamps that against here, pinches that lathe bed. So this needs to be clean and lubricated under here, and this needs to be clean and lubricated, as well as the joints for the handle. And this whole bar, you don't want any burrs on there, you don't want any dirt on there. Because this is this needs to slide along there freely. And I can I can actually feel a few burrs coming through this steel wool. Just just slight. And the reason, of course, that you don't want to use sandpaper, you don't want to be removing any metal anywhere. Certainly not from the lathe bed. You can replace this. You can replace the tailstock even, but you can't replace that lathe bed without buying a new lathe. I can definitely feel some grit on the underside of this. I don't know if it's a burr or just crud. Right there. Okay. I'm satisfied that's clean. I'm going to blow it off. And lubricate it. and lubricate the entire length of the bar here. Now I'll let that dry. And in the meantime, I'll work on this. And that feels nice and smooth and clean. So I'm going to put some lubrication on there. And then I need to get inside the banjo where this goes. Easier said than done. Well, I guess I can attack it partially from the bottom. I don't think I can get steel wool down in there. Maybe. Oh yeah, I can. I can't turn it very well. Well, I can. And I gotta get it from the top side. That makes it easier. 
This is the inside of the uh, banjo, or in, inside of the banjo that holds the uh, tool rest. I forgot that that just falls out of there. But that's a good thing. So I can clean that up. The, uh, the tool rest, the shank of the tool rest just goes between these two spots. And then inside the hole of the banjo. And then when I tighten this up, it pulls this against the uh, tool rest shank. I don't feel any burrs on there. So I'll lubricate that as well. And then from the top side. And then blow it out. Then my paper towel still has lubricant on it, so I can stick that in there. I'm thinking this is going to be pretty nice. So now to get everything back where it belongs, see the, the bottom of that nut has to fit under the lathe bed. Oh wow. That's pretty nice. And then I gotta fit this piece back in here. And then I'm just sticking my finger in there to spread those two beveled parts apart. So far so good. Now this piece, oh, it's heavy. Oh, maybe if I put it on the right way, what do you think? Okay. Well, would you look at that? I don't hear any squeaking. Lock it down good and tight. Not going anywhere. Now, there's one other thing that I need to show you. I just did this on my last turning, so I'm not going to do it again. But you need a, a fine file. And you need to smooth this out. And do the full length. Even though mostly you just use it right here, do, do the full length or you're going to end up with a sloped tool rest. So even though you're not using this over here much, run the full length across there. Just a few strokes and get those little nicks and chips and scratches out of there so that your gouge or whatever tool you're using will slide along there nicely. And this is one place, I, I don't know if it does any good and I doubt if it lasts very long, but this is one place that I do use paste wax. It's right along here. It probably lasts for five minutes or something, but it, it feels nice while I'm doing it. You don't have to file this whole top. I did because when, when I got this tool rest, it was painted black. All, all, all of this was black and I didn't want paint on there. I didn't want it chipping off and causing its own problems. So I filed the whole thing just to clean that paint off. But after that, you just need to do this top edge. But do that full length or you'll be sorry. We still need a little bit of maintenance on the tailstock. Remember I showed you this in the beginning? This is to clean out that number two Morris taper.
See a little bit of crud coming out of there? And you do the same thing in the headstock. However, I almost never take my chuck off, so I don't really use that. If I ever do, I'll clean it at that time, but I'm not taking it off now just for that. And then, we need to take this out of here. This is a tailstock ram. It's got threads on this end, on the inside there, that the handle attaches to. It's got a groove in there that matches up with this locking handle out here. Once, once you've uh, advanced it, then you lock it in place so that it doesn't come undone. So this needs cleaning. This needs steel wool and that same lubricant that I've been using. At least that's what I'm going to try this time. Don't put any lubricant inside there. When these two tapers fit together, you don't want lubricant in there. You want metal to metal contact. So I'll do that off camera. You, uh, you don't need to see me going like this with steel wool and then like this with lubricant. I'll do that off camera. I'll be right back. I just used my steel wool lightly because this is engraved with numbers for the amount of travel that you have on here. And I also used compressed air and blew out inside here. And just put it back in there, line it up. And crank it in. Smooth as silk and ready for whatever live center or whatever center you're going to be putting in there. It's ready to go. I think all modern lathes have this feature, but the older ones did not. As you're returning this to home position, it will, watch right here, it will automatically eject the center. See that? The old ones had a knockout bar. You had to slide in from the end and knock that out of there. But the new ones, self-eject, which is a terrific feature. Okay, tailstock's done, banjo's done, tool rest done, lathe bed done. I'm done. So I'm sure this is a chore that we all put off until we just can't handle it anymore. I know, I know that's the way I work. But you know, it's an hour well spent. Makes your turning more pleasurable. Makes for quieter videos. Things like that. So I hope this was of interest to you. It is my turning video for the week. I'll see you next week with a new one. So for now, this is Phil. Shady Acres Woodshop. Signing off.